Well, thank you. I uh, really appreciate um, you guys being here and somebody showing up. That, that's really good. Um, I wanted to talk to you about sourcing type of three skills and, and not just on a macro level, but also on a, on a, a sp more specific type of three level. Um, but first, let me introduce who we are and, and where we're coming from. Um, we're with Web Essentials, um, and we're in Phnom Penh in Cambodia. Cambodia? Is that something like that? Cambodia. Cambodia. Um, yeah. Um, and we have quite a few people there, and we've been working there for um, four and a half years. We have some pretty good um, skills, but really we wanted to talk on a, on a, a broader level and really understand a little bit about what's what's happening, and so that's kind of what started the the ideas for for this talk. Uh, huh? Yeah, I'm Dominic Stankowski. I'm originally from Switzerland. I'm a software engineer, and I moved to Cambodia seven years ago. Mm -hmm. I'm also a member of the expert advisory board of the Type of Three Association, and I have. I have founded Web Essentials with my wife um, in 2010. And there's a bit of a story behind um, Web Essentials. It's that when I was about 20 years old, I had a dream um, where I was dreaming that I would provide um, software. I would develop software with a team in a de developing country. and. I would sell the software in a fair trade way. Uh, fair trade, um, I was actually interested by fair trade because I was part of a group called Stop Poverty. That's an advocacy group in Switzerland of Christians that want to remind um, the, the Swiss government of the Millennium Development Goals of the United Nations. Um, to reduce poverty by half um, by 2015. And so I, I was um, looking up fair trade, I was reading about fair trade, and um, what I found is that there are some fair trade products, but there is no or almost no fair trade services. And when I started to read the certifications uh, for fair trade, for example, to produce fair trade bananas or fair trade honey or chocolate um, or whatever, um, there was a part about how to produce these products. But the main part of the certification was about the labor conditions. And I thought, well, actually, software is about labor mainly because we all know that. Um, developers, um, project managers, really the, the human side in so software development is the asset. And so I was thinking, well, actually that may fit really well uh, in um, bringing fair trade to software development. And um, yeah, and so as I was thinking about it, I was really dreaming this um, uh, during the night, and I. It was something that I took with me, and when I traveled to Cambodia in 2008, it was to go and work for um, a local business and a, a local training center, and I had that in mind. And quickly, I found out that actually there would be a chance and a possibility to uh, implement my passion there. And so that's how Web Essentials started. And I'm John Bowers. And uh, I have about 20 years in sales. Came, it's a long trek, but from San Diego to England to Cambodia, and now my family and I live in, in Cambodia. Um, we kind of came out. We came out to um, Cambodia and, um, really to work with uh, Web Essentials um, and to kind of make a difference. I've been in software for a long time, um, and it really seemed like. Uh, the, the goal of, of most software companies is to make the millionaire owner more millions. And I just kind of thought there's something kind of wrong with that. Um, and I wanted to spread out the, the value and the benefit because that doesn't benefit customers, it doesn't benefit employees. 
And this is my first exposure to Typo 3 and to kind of a group collaboration to develop software on such a grand scale. And it's pretty amazing, really, to see what, what all is happening. Um, and so I was just kind of looking at how can we continue to grow this? How can we make this um, bigger and bigger? Because I think that's the right way um, to do things. And I think what we're doing in, in Cambodia is um, trying to help develop their way th through poverty by software developing. So we're developing software and developing people at, at the same time. So that's kind of where I come into, into this and to ha help with some of the, the sales and marketing um, for Web Essentials. So, um, in this talk, I mean, I'm, I'm sales and marketing. I'm not technical. If you guys start asking me about code and stuff, then my eyes are going to glaze over. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to grow things. Who, who wants their company to grow by 20% in 2015 or more in the audience? Anybody? Is that, I mean, or do you have bigger goals than that? But 20% is kind of a manageable um, number. It's you know kind of a, a maybe a stretch goal for some big companies. 20% is a lot for smaller companies. Maybe you want more, but just kind of the mindset of of, of growing a little bit. Now, who also would like to see Typo Three grow globally by 20% or more? Yeah, there's some hands. Okay, very good, <laughs> very good. I like that. Um, and that's kind of where I'm coming at it from as well because. Looking at some of the data, that's quite an interesting question to look at from an individual level for your own businesses that you're all involved in, whether you're a freelancer or if you have a, I don't know, 500 person company, um, Typo 3's growth is, is really a benefit because it's so much easier to sell a customer when they say, mm, on this bid specification, it has to be Typo 3. That's great, because that excludes a lot of, a lot of other, other companies. Now, um, th that happens, but we would like to see that happen more. And so where we're going with this is I'm trying to look at it from a company standpoint to be so that type of three companies are bigger, stronger, faster, and we think that possibly being able to have a better ability to, to have access to more skills and maybe more s some specific skills in specific areas and being able to bring those into projects um, more easily will help you to grow and help you to achieve some of your, um, your, your, your requirements for 2015. So that's kind of why, why it's important, not just for us because you know we do this f for a living, we do source skills, but we also Sometimes we get excess um, requirements, and we source out as well. We do that for specialist skills. We do that for sometimes for capacity. Um, and so, whilst you know, sometimes we're co competitors, and sometimes we're uh, working together. And I, I think within Typo Three, it's a little bit easier. I come from a Microsoft world, and you know, it's it gets pretty bloody sometimes. I think it's also a question about leadership. And um, mm. recently, yeah. we had a, a staff training. Um, we always start the week with our weekly essentials. So that's just um, all staff together. Yeah. And um, I used an image that I uh, learned from um, someone in South Africa who was fighting it against apartheid. And I would like to illustrate leadership. So we have a tree here. And as a leader, I think we need to show the way. So we need to climb up the tree. And you know, there are some people down here they're looking up, and they're saying, oh, he's pretty good at that. 
It's, it's quite amazing. Actually, he, look at him now. He is actually already up here. That's great. He's, he's, he's almost a bit crazy because he's walking out here. on this branch. Look at him. Oh, wow. We're really amazed what he's able to do until the person is falling down. And what will everyone say? Well, we always knew it. <laughs> he will fall. We always knew. And how about Neos and Flo embracing it? What position do we take? Are we actually taking a branch here and moving out with the risk that we will fall? And what are other people telling us? So what I want to illustrate is like, um, leadership is about making steps, and it involves risks. And it is also about sometimes being alone and people looking at us. And um, in regards to the Type of 3 community, I think we need more leadership. We need more people to take risks. I think it's a way how um, Type of 3 has grown mm -hmm. by companies saying, well, Type of 3 is great, we're using it for everything. And um, I think it's one of the big strengths of the Type 3 community and how it has become so big and how it comes that we're celebrating 10 years here. Um, but we need to continue that um, leadership. Mm -hmm. So um, let's talk a bit about um, our um, research. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I try to do some research because I come from, like I say, a, a quite kind of a different world. 20 years in software, but this is the first time in web, in web development. And so I just wanted to look at, you know, global trends and see where CMS or, or um, Type O3 fits into to the world of CMS. And I thought, oh, well, that's not that's not terrific, but you know, maybe maybe there's room for growth. And 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 um, I'll look at other things. And there's another, I looked at another market share um, statistic, uh, um, chart. And the interesting thing about this is that in 2010, it's 4.2%, and in 2014, it's 1.6%. Which, on the face of it, thinks, oh, wow, we've lost a lot. But if we look into it a little bit, I think it's a little bit misleading because the I think maybe in, in, um, over this period of time, um, we've lost market share. But so has Joomla, so has Drupal, and these other, um, you know, blogger. You know, they're not really a, a competitor, really. I mean, you may use some some WordPress stuff uh, in, in some of your sites um, for for blogs, but that's that's counted in the statistics. So, although I think it's not as bad as it looks. It's still, if you look at, compared to Drupal and Joomla, we still have lost market share overall. And that could be because we're going, getting into much bigger projects and there's fewer of those and you're doing fewer projects in a year. Um, but still, if you look at some of the, you know, the growth statistics, we need to be able to um, embrace some of the new trends that are happening um, in, in the market. Um, and then, so I just wanted to kind of look at, uh, or uh, Dominic started some research back in 2010, and then, um, yeah, you can let him tell me about that. Yeah. So we did a, a first uh, survey in 2010, and it was sent to all association members um, uh, about uh, sourcing type of three skills, and uh, our idea was to find out um, what trends were um, back then, and I presented um, the results of that survey at the Type of 3 conference in Dallas in 2010. And um, now we did a new survey this year. And thanks to everyone who has uh, filled out mm -hmm. the survey. Mm -hmm. And um, we have had 97 participants. 
And um, yeah, we're presenting here some of the results. Unfortunately, we can't present everything uh, because we, the time is too short for this. But we're also going to have um, a paper about it. And you can sign up for it at our booth after the talk. Mm -hmm. um, but the idea is really to, to look at uh, some of the trends that we have been able to, to find and see, OK, how can this influence our strategy for 2015? So um, what we found is that um, there are less freelancers who responded to the survey, um, um, more IT services companies, um, more web companies, uh, yeah, in terms of respondents. Also, the company size um, has grown uh, compared to um, those people who responded in 2017, uh, in, uh, in 2014, we have uh, bigger company sizes. And I think that's not particularly surprising um, because when we look at the Type 3 community, a lot of companies started when Type 3 was created and um, made open source. And um, those companies have grown together with type of three, mm -hmm. and um, they continue to grow. Mm -hmm. You can also see it in this statistic that um, there are um, the people who have been using type of three for a longer period of time is higher. And again, uh, this shows that um, type of three has um, a, a lot of users um, who stay with type of three. Um, for a long period, which is good. But um, a problem is obviously that there are not, not so many new users uh, mm -hmm. to Type 3. Now, I also looked at it and um, coming from Asia um, and looking at the faces surrounding me there um, and then coming here, um, it looks like this is quite Europe-centric, which is, which is okay, but it's becoming even more so here. And you know, Europe's a big market. That's great, and that's really good. Um, and that fits where Type 03 is now. But if we look at market trends, you know, Asia is growing huge, and, and you know, Type 03 is, is struggling to get um, a good foothold in the US as well. So we're just trying to think of, of ways to broaden the, the geography as well, and maybe this can help um, with some of that as well. Now, I looked at this, you know, not really understanding. So I try to look at, okay, why, it, you know, I'll come from IT, but, um, and it, it should be much easier to do this stuff nowadays, right? We've got all these great new technologies. Um, the Indians have been doing outsourcing, and they've spent, you know, billions to make this um, better and, and stuff. So I started to look at, well, you know, what do I expect to come from this survey? Um, you know, we're using better common methodologies with, with, with Agile. We're look, we have a, a greater language sophistication in English. English is getting uh, more and more, you know, uh, uh, people are getting better at it as a, as a business language from the world trade to the EU to um, Asian countries using English as kind of a, a, a common medium. Um, better collaboration tools, so if companies are on the same collaboration tool set, then they understand how the tools work. So we're getting all these layers of communication, which is, you know, better and better. Um, we also have kind of macro things happening. Telecoms are cheap. Um, to, to make your, your calls, um, international flights are cheaper. Um, and also, there's greater globalization and cultural acceptance, so people aren't just so used to only doing things here, and that's the way we've always done it, and oh no, I couldn't possibly do business you know, 100 miles away or something like that. So there's greater cultural acceptance there. But when I did the research, I looked at it, and I... So one of the things that came out is that from a general perception point of view, um, it looks like outsourcing is 
less positive today. It looks like it's a bit more negative, at least from a perception point of view, and that it needs improvement. But I thought, well, why, how can that be? Why is that? When it seems like things should be getting easier, um, it do, this statistic doesn't seem to reflect that. So, so um, we, I asked a, a, a question that we didn't ask in 2010. So really, looking at this chart, it looks like um, the main reason is miscommunication or lack of communication. And that, um, and quality, and differences in culture and expectations, and kind of, those are all kind of the same thing, because if it, you, you're not complaining about miscommunication because the quality is too high, right? It's because there's something that was missing and the, the quality is not as good as you um, would have wanted. And so these are really the main areas um, in expectation, in communication, and in output um, that are, um, that, that people, that give people a negative impression of, of sourcing skills. And when I say outsourcing, it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, across the world, it could be outside of your company. That, that's kind of the definition we use because it could be near, mid, or, or offshoring. So um, just wanted to clarify that. But we also see web trends, um, for example, front-end sophistication, <laughs> responsive design, parallax scrolling, a lot of business logic, mm -hmm. like um, form validation, for example, moving to the front-end. Um, so there is more complexity there. Third-party services that need to be integrated. There are more devices that need to be supported. Um, what we experience as outsourcing provider is that more companies are coming to us with wagon boxes or Docker environments, and we need to be able to um, integrate them in our own workflow. Um, the involvement of developers in writing tests is increasing too. Um, then deployment to cloud services um, or auto-scaling infrastructures. Uh, we have front-end caches, so uh, developers need to be much more aware when they develop, how they develop um, something. Um, and there are more products. Uh, there's not only TYPO3 CMS, and they need to be good in TypeScript. Um, uh, to be a good integrator, um, but there is also Flow, Neos, and there are some other products that are actually also commonly used in the Type 3 community, like Shopware or Magento. And um, Magento has been around for some time, but Shopware has come up, and there are some more that Type 3 companies use, so there's also more products. Mm -hmm. And so um, what we see is also that web development becomes more complex. Mm -hmm. So maybe this also adds to what we saw before, that the quality is not good enough. Maybe the level of quality also has increased, I think, probably. Who thinks that the level of, um, of complexity has increased in, 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 in web development over the past five years? Mm -hmm. yeah, I think. A lot of people uh, <laughs> see this as well, and yeah, and so maybe that also uh, continues to create problems. Although um, the, actually the level of how outsourcing is done has improved, um, it still leads to quality problems, or it still leads to um, communication problems, just because there is much more. Uh, the prerequisites are much higher, or the, um, the execution is much more complicated. Mm -hmm. And then also every environment is unique. So for every client, um, every project has its own challenges. Mm -hmm. So as it's getting increasingly difficult to keep up with uh, quality and communication in general, um, there are some questions that uh, come to my mind. Um, so it's where, where do you, um, where do you want to invest into in 2015? And are we reactive or are we proactive about our, our strategy? Um, I actually wanted to ask 
uh, the audience. Um, what are the areas that you're going to invest into? And is it um, technical areas? Is it uh, management areas? Is it uh, communication areas? Um, and how is this for you related to also to outsourcing? So maybe we can, um, well, we cannot ask everyone, but maybe we could have like three, four voices. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Do you, have you been planning any um, any investment in 2015 um, for different areas within your businesses, or is it too early to ask that question? Anybody know? Hmm. <laughs> this is working out great. Um, okay. Who is planning to, maybe more specific questions would help, um, who is planning to source um, or looking for um, strategies in 2015 that they will invest into um, for NEOS? One person at the back, very good. Um, how about, um, you know, are, are, you, are you looking to, maybe you're looking to contract? I don't know, um, you know, depending on, on what market stuff um, you're, you're, you're facing. Um, maybe f more flow applications? Anybody? A few? Okay. More type of three extensions or, okay, okay. So is, is it a big, is, uh, well, are, is anybody, do they think they're more reactive than proactive at this point for for the market, kind of okay. I mean that's fair. I mean if you've got a successful formula, why you know you don't necessarily break the wheel, but um, okay. Let's just move on here. Okay, we we also asked um, in the survey um, what uh, people are um, actually investing right now, and then also in the future. So. There are a few uh, questions we didn't ask in 2010 uh, because they, it was not possible. So, for example, uh, NEOS uh, integration mm -hmm. and um, flow applications, um, like mobile app development. Um, we didn't ask about e-commerce that time um, or type of three upgrades, which has become increasingly, increasingly important since. Mm -hmm. um, so. But here is the result. What we can see is that um, type of three extension development and front end development are still the most important areas um, to outsource, but they have decreased. And um, yeah, and some of the new technologies are, are 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 slowly catching up. When we look at the at the plan, we can see that. There is also, like we can see, okay, a bit more NEOS maybe, a bit more flow, a bit more app development. Well, it's actually not um, really, uh, we couldn't presume from, from, from this data that it's actually going through the roof with NEOS and flow next year. Um, because it's only about 5%. So if this is really core business, then um, it would be actually much more. Like it would be that we had so many projects that we could hardly handle them, so I would actually see how we can outsource them. And um, yeah, so really in terms of also looking at the Type 3 community, um, I don't know what you think, but I think um, uh, is this really, uh, are we really embracing some of these, these technologies enough? Are we really? Um, or are, is everyone doing this, but just in-house? And so it's not really re reflected uh, on the outsourcing. Mm -hmm. um, for the outsourcing strategy, there are some blockers that we have also identified. Um, some people say, well, actually, I would like to outsource um, my NEOS project or the Type of 3 uh, project, but I'm just waiting for the perfect project mm -hmm. to come. So 
this doesn't sound strategic for me. It sounds more like, let's see and when there is potentially a moment, then I will look at it. Um, that sometimes the capacity um, for strategies is missing because um, those people who make the decision in companies are overloaded and so they can't think out of the box um, and try a new approach because it's just too much. Like there is so much work and we're so busy with what we're already doing. So I don't have any capacity to actually look at how we could get this started. Um, there could be that some people just want to keep the knowledge in-house. Um, I think that's, that's fair enough. Um, but from uh, experience, I also see that it's not so easy to change um, a whole company to a new technology. I think you all, all know that too. Um, and then some blockers are also the client relationship. So actually we tell our client that the software is 100% German made. Um, or it's uh, actually 100% Swiss made. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, the reason we put the blockers here is um, sometimes when the blockers are mentioned, it means that sourcing is not part of the strategy. Um, it's also left open to an occasion or um, maybe sometimes it's left to the point that until it's really becoming a necessity. Mm -hmm. And if we look at Type 3 at the more global level and we want uh, to make sure that Type 3 becomes more known on a more global level, it needs more a strategic approach. It cannot be just a an approach where, okay, maybe it's happening and maybe it's not happening. If we want to make um, some of these new products and uh, maybe even Type 3 CMS more known globally, it needs more of a strategic approach to it. Another thing we found in the, in the survey, we asked, you know, is this it? Are these the only um, factors that are, that are important or does um, corporate social responsibility play a part? And within um, Typo 3, Inspired to Share and Sharing and all that kind of stuff, that um, it, it looks like it is important and it's much more important than it was um, five years ago. Um, and in the way we work, um, you know, open source is really important because in Cambodia, it's, you can't find a legal movie. You can't find legal, well, you can find some legal software, but the prevailing mentality is, well, I'll just get it ripped off somewhere else and get it for free or get everything I want for $5 on a disc. And, and you know, we don't, we don't work that way. We want to work to where um, you respect copyright and you respect the responsibilities um, that, that come with, with providing services and, and things like that. So, um, so for us, um, this whole development piece and seeing um, CSR is, is quite important. And, and companies are, are, you know, well, Google do no evil and, and other companies are looking more at their reputation and their brand and what that means to their customer base and how that, can they communicate that. So, I mean, the, there is um, kind of a growing um, perception um, that, that being able to provide, you know, a bit more impact, um, social impact with your services um, is, a, is a, a way of, um, of providing in a, in a better way than, than before. And, and sometimes, you know, if, if you have a, a choice between two different vendors and, well, what are all the impacts that are involved? You know, some are financial and, and some are, are more soft costs. Um, then um, this seems to be um, more of a trend of something that's happening more and more. So that, that was another factor that came out of the survey. And then we have a number of just statistics and stuff that we kind of want to roll through and look at why they're looking, why companies are looking to, to outsource. So 
access to specialized skills. Um, if you have a project and this piece needs to be done outside the company, so bring somebody in for that or, or source that out to this company. They can, they can do that. Templating and, and other things are, are it, that seems to be growing in there. Um, staff peaking problems, um, which is, you know, you have peaks and troughs, but then also we added a new thing in 2014 for just more capacity. We want to grow, but we don't necessarily want to add people. How can we grow with a, more of a fixed cost base so that it's, it's easier for us to manage these kinds of um, peaks and troughs? Because, you know, a lot of times this is, um, you know, web development and new sites. So you get a big spike in activity um, for the new site, and then it kind of rumbles onto maybe some support and maybe some, a, a few little little tiny peaks for um, you know new, new development but generally you got these big spikes in in productivity um, unless you're developing maybe more applications and things like that but it's usually quite a bit like that so how do you know how do you plan for that and and to be able to have kind of an outlet to be able to to cater for those types of situations is another reason why um, people are looking um, to do to to find skills um, to augment what they have in house. Yeah, we also found that access to specialized skills. I think we don't have that um, you know, on the slide, but more uh, companies actually outsourcing to Germany. Uh, I think a lot of companies have started to outsource to Carson and to Robert and mm. to some of the core developers. Um, but it, it's also quite obvious if, if we want to grow this market, um, uh, especially when we look at Neos or Flow, then it, it won't be possible with a handful of core developers. But there must be more uh, people, more specialists in these areas that really can help with uh, uh, growing some of, uh, some of the skills that are needed. Um, yeah. Okay, we have um, tried to draw some conclusions so that um, with higher sophistication and complexity, um, we, we think that looking at um, uh, outsourcing and make it successful, it needs to be more strategic. It can't be just done on an ad hoc basis uh, because the, yeah, the complexity has increased. Um, uh, it's... Um, also, especially for the Type 3 community, um, to grow new uh, Type 3 products, um, we, we really need to have more specialists and better access to those specialists. Um, then also, um, for outsourcing, for our outsourcing strategy, um, we need to look at outsourcing more holistically. So maybe can it benefit our CSR, or does it benefit our client CSR, or does it actually unlock new ideas? We had um, someone who sent uh, the best two staff to us and work with us um, just to take them away from the development team for some time to make that development team independent from them. And interestingly, they became independent. So. Outsourcing was actually used to achieve different goals. It's not only about saving money, it's maybe also making a structural change. And we can actually see also from our experience that um, the blockers in outsourcing um, often also come from um, not wanting to change um, processes in the company. The question is just with the new web trends, um, with the increased um, um, pressure, financial pressure, and uh, with the uh, increased complexity of web projects, is it, is it possible to cope with all of this in-house? And as you also know, there are new companies popping up that um, do only specialize on front-end or only specialize on continuous uh, deployment or uh, uh, consultancy uh, companies. And so is it possible to do all in-house, or do we need to, to access more resources, um, not only to grow our business, but also to grow the Type 3 products? Mm -hmm. 
And so, really, you know, if we're a community and we're trying to, uh, as, as one, try to, you know, grow together and benefit one another, um, getting better at, at sourcing those skills, at bringing in, you know, pieces into sophisticated projects. Um, we're all trying to get better at that, but I'm, it, it seems like it's getting harder to, to do that. Um, but we need to look at strategies, um, and, and, and it's not just a global strategy, too. It, it comes down to people, and people being able to understand one another, being able to, you know, if you've worked with somebody for a couple of years, you really know them quite well, and then the, the, the communication is greater because of that. Um, and to do this not only benefits us from a, um, a, an individual company perspective, but um, it, it enables us to develop some of these new technologies and it enables us to, to be able to, to grow as a community um, globally. Are we out of time? Yes, okay. Oh, okay. Good. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you for your time. Mm. Thank you, Dominic. Thank you, John. Okay. Yeah, as we are short in time, uh, I guess we don't. We have to skip the question and answer. Okay, well, I, I mean, it's at the booth. And we have some fun.